awesome news. I just got the call and everything is done for powder coating. So we're gonna head on over there, pick things up and see how it looks. Look at how sexy all of this looks. So it's all textured black, which is kind of my go-to. I used it on the WR over there. On the swing arm, you can't really see it because the cat house is in the way, but it looks really, really good, and it's a very durable powder coat. So this thing's gonna be getting put through some abuse. I wanted something pretty tough that's gonna stand up to stuff. This thing's definitely gonna cart wheel off some cliffs. Okay. Just get like one motor mouth bolt. Here, you want to pull the clutch cable through there? I have no idea which side. I think this is the side I pulled it out from. Oh, and I'm like blocking all the, the cameras. Like, tilted. Oh, I see how it's coming on there. Oh yeah, can you support over there real quick? Mm -hmm. Okay, we just want to try not to drop it. Scratch it. Yeah. Oh, beauty. Hopefully it hopefully it fits in the powder coating. Oh, well, that was pretty easy. Dude, that already looks like really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Woo! I'm so pumped. Yep, can you oh. I'm sure it's all identical. I'll lift her up a bit. We already got cat hair sticking to the, <laughs> the mount bolt. It makes the it makes the bike run better. Beautiful. So it's time to introduce all of you to the first sponsored product of this build. I want to give a huge shout out to Polysport Plastics for uh, providing me with this restyle, well it's actually a whole restyle kit. I'm not going to show you the rest of the plastics because I'm going to let you keep guessing on what color scheme I'm going to go for, but included in the kit is this uh, modern style air box. Um, so it replaces the stock air box from the 2002 and it makes it identical to uh, what's in the newer bikes like my 2016 250X here. So that's really cool. It allows you to mount up the modern style rest of the plastics. Uh, I already got the boot all mounted up. Let's get this air box mounted up and try and bolt down the subframe. So I forgot to show you, but this is the old air box. See, it's kind of got this weird like pointy design to it. It's dirty, it's old, it's scratched up, and it's kind of ugly. So we're gonna do without that. Well, this should be pretty straightforward as well. Uh, slide this in here. Nice tight fit now that we got powder coating, but it'll work. So we're not gonna tighten these up quite yet, and we won't bother putting the top one in because we know we're gonna have to take this out to pivot this so it's a lot easier for us to get the uh, carburetor put in there.
we got pretty much the whole chassis put together. Just got the swing arm, rear shock, rear brake, some of the controls on. Uh, the frame, swing arm, triples, everything's powder coated. It's looking so, so nice. A lot better than the shiny silver and the kind of scuffed up blue. So really excited with how that turned out. Um, thanks a lot to Beans Best LLC right here in Ann Arbor. They're uh, just across the street from where I'm building this bike. We have our first sponsored part that I'm going to introduce to you. It's in here in this box. Probably my favorite part that's going to be on the whole bike. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out right here. We have a Electron carburetor. These things are absolutely badass. What's so cool about this is that there's no jetting in it, or at least not like the uh, like standard jets in the stock uh, key and carburetor. So how this works is basically there's a metering rod that hangs down and uh, just in simple terms it creates a vacuum behind this metering rod as air comes in and that determines how much fuel is drawn up through the float bowl so pretty much more dense air more fuel that's going to come up that means you don't have to rejet for colder temperatures or higher or lower elevation like i've ridden in 32 degrees Fahrenheit, even even a little bit colder, all the way up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I never touched the, the, the tuning on it um, on my YZ250X. So I'm super excited to put this thing in here. Uh, some other advantages to it are you get a lot better fuel efficiency. The throttle response is absolutely insane. The installation is super easy. Uh, you pretty much just have to take the old carburetor out, put the new one in. You don't even have to hook it up to the CDI box. So no electronics in it. The installation is really easy. You just swap this out with the old one and then you put a new throttle cable in which they provide right here. So they use Barnett throttle cables, um, very high quality stuff. Uh, they have all the guides and everything you need for installation or tuning if, if necessary. Uh, on my YZ250X I put it in straight out of the box. The only thing I adjusted was my idle screw which is a little knob you can see right here. All you do is turn that guy and you can adjust your idle, but everything ran fine. Um, they set them up pretty well before they ship to you for what your bike is. Huge thanks to Electron for sending this over for the, the project bike here. I absolutely can't wait to uh, put it on and see how it does. Not everyone is super confident about doing their own bike work, but I promise you this is very, very easy. So I'll walk through the first little bit with you. How I found was most easy to start this process is to install the throttle cable before you put it on, just so that way nothing's getting in the way like the frame or anything. So. All we do is we take this slide cover off, then we pull this out. We gotta get the slide out, so we'll just reach in there, slide it up a little bit, and it should pretty much fall out. Yep, there it goes. So to start, we're gonna take a little bit of this cable grease that is supplied, and we are just going to lube up the cable here a little bit. Now we're gonna take this, and then we're gonna take that cap that we just removed, the slide cap, and we want to feed the cable through here, all the way through that spring, and then we may as well thread this on just a little bit for now. There we go. So we'll just screw that on about like that, take the slide in the end of the cable, and all we do is feed it through just like that, get that spring down in there, now from there we can just put the slide back in, push it all the way down, and then make sure your gasket is aligned properly and you just put the screws back in. And the cable feels nice and good, nice and smooth, so there we go. One thing about the YZs at least is that it is a pretty tight squeeze to get it in, but once you find the right angle, it'll go in no problem. So there we go, squeeze it by right there, rotate it a little bit, and then all we gotta do is pop that guy in there. And there we go. One extra little thing I'll show about install right now is just cleaning up some of these hoses. Uh, this yellow one here, that's gonna be your main fuel right there, so we'll have that dangle here just to pick up from the gas tank once that's installed. And then these other little tubes are just vent and drain tubes. 
Uh, I like to kind of just run them all together. Man, that looks good. So pretty easy, just slip the airbox boot on there, get the subframe back in alignment. So now just make sure that the uh, boot is nice and sealed up, pushed as far into the carb as possible. It looks like we're all the way set there. Yep, that's good. Tighten up this other hose clamp. And there we go.